Welcome, Welcome to the, the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Supporting great content by hitting the cash app and by joining the Patreon. And we have Pantera Capital's Dan Moorhead explains why he believes equities are wildly overvalued. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, guys. We know the Fed flooded the market with money. But he states they're 23 to 43 percent overvalued. And we know that as facts. And he talked about the market being steady in history for a 13 year span. Don't forget what Blackstone State is going to be 10 years in the United States with no growth. And guys, we know why. Because of the fourth industrial revolution. And they talk about Bitcoin being a hedge. No, it's not a hedge right now. But the fact is, once the drums get their beaten and we move over to this fourth industrial revolution, then you're going to see Bitcoin and crypto at work. We know why the Fed printed all that money in order to get us over to this digital transformation. Now we have Singapore clamping down on money laundering, freezes over $2 billion in assets, and states a lot of this money is from family offices in China. But guys, we know Singapore is leading the fourth industrial revolution. Coinbase just got approval. Ripple just got approval. The only thing Singapore is getting ready for is this digital transformation. And we hear Becky bringing up Bitcoin. Let's listen in. The number of family offices registered in Singapore has more than tripled during the pandemic to over 1,000. Family offices have minimum disclosure requirements, and until recently, they paid no taxes on investment gains in Singapore. So Singapore became a global and guys, hub for we these know family how offices. Big Ray Singapore Dalio, is when it comes uh, to crypto. Ray and Google uh, all have family offices in Singapore. The question now is, do they start to crack down? Were this they is not by in chance. They're coming in to crack down. Number of family offices. Why would family started. offices be formed in Singapore to begin with? Because I think of like shady Bitcoin operations that are Shady Bitcoin. places like Singapore or beyond, why in the world would you put your family offices? The Gillian Singapore capital. So they created a regulatory environment for family offices that was basically no taxes on capital gains if you had a family office, which is all their gains. And they made it very easy to register. So there were minimal disclosure requirements in terms of who you were, where your money came from. And they Privacy. also wanted... And we know the mainstream media brings you the truth when everything is about to end. Now they're talking about the bond market constantly, yield rates constantly. We even have Jim Cramer talking about yield rates. But we see the stock market moving right along with the bond market. And we know no one wants this United States paper. We have our wreck to end all dollar cash withdrawals by January 1st of 2024. And it states to stop crime. And this is coming from the Iraq Central Bank. And we know the banks are the biggest what? I'll let you finish that. And with these higher interest rates plus inflation, guys, we know a lot of these loans, these commercial loans have to be refinanced. The cost of everything has went up. Remember, we're in a fragmented world. They have to destroy every sector in order for the machines to take over. But let's listen to Kenahan on the bond market. Now bonds, uh, you know, the, the stock market is subservient to the bond market in a way that I don't think it was before. And what I mean by that is we really are moving tick for tick with bonds. It's unbelievable how, I, it, whether everyone realizes it or not, over the last couple of weeks, they've become a bond trader. And how many and times have I told you the stock market about the bond market, the about the yield rate? This is why. And we have the SEC sues to force Elon Musk to testify in Twitter Pro, the SEC is suing Elon Musk claiming the owner of X didn't comply with subpoena to testify. Musk failed to appear for testimony September 15th, the SEC said in the lawsuit on Thursday. The case is tied to Musk's purchase of Twitter last year and the stock trading surrounding the acquisition. And we know this is nothing but the Hegelian dialectic. We have so many lawsuits going on, so many strikes going on. Guys, there's order out of chaos. I told you at the end of last year what was going to happen during this time. And we're here at the moment. We have Trump. We have Sam Bankman free. And we still have the Ripple case going on. And the trial is set for next year. Why is the SEC doing this? 
because they're kicking the regulation can down the road. They want the emerging markets to rise first, and then the United States is going to follow. And with the emerging markets leading the fourth industrial revolution led by China, that's going to allow China over the next few years to become the world reserve currency, that digital yuan. And the only thing you have to do is look up the Belt and Road if you don't believe me. If you see all the countries and all the population, you know where the money is about to be. And remember, all this is being set up for the machine takeover. Now we have the FTC and DOJ merge guidelines to reflect anti-merger agenda. And now that these large corporations own everything, a lot of these companies own trillions of dollars, hundreds of billions. Now it's time to break them up. Guys, they already own everything. They're just going to give you an illusion of choice because now algorithms and the machines will be running everything. And I'm going to leave you with a video from Klaus to tell you. But remember, the crypto teacher told you first because, you know, when it came to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. You will use the app like Uber, but not anymore to call some driver, but an automatically guided car, a self-driven car, will come to your hotel or wherever you are and will bring you to the airport. No, Los Angeles is one of the cities with the heaviest traffic, who told me in 2030, Los Angeles will be private car driven free. And this will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETF are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner 
every beneficial seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids books, it's time to re-educate. Also, Nuno Crypto's Coinbase Bitchu Bunnets. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.